Hey, greetings all. It has been many weeks since I was last here working on this old Type 97. And the fact that it has been so many weeks ought to give you an indicator just of what life is like in quarantine with a kid who's about to turn two. Actually, he's turning two in two days. Probably need to get a birthday present or something. Anyway, um, I'm just going to pick up where I was last and we'll see how much further I go. You'll see the tripod in the background. I brought up a second camera so you actually get to see a little bit more of the model as it is under construction. I have my alcoholic beverage of choice, which of course I'm not probably not allowed to say what it is, so whatever. Product of Denmark, if I recall. Possibly the best beep in the world. It isn't, but it's not bad. Okay. Where was I? I had finished the lower hull. I may well have had a crack at the upper hull. No, I have not done the upper hull. So I have put together the various little parts here. Oh, by the way, this mat here. So Brad over at Tank Craft, Tank Craft, whatever, I think Tank Craft without missing a letter, uh, missing a C. Uh, he says that he felt bad for my crappy old IKEA. 15 to 20 year old table that's been battered to hell and back and he has sent me a couple of uh, self-heating cutting mats and uh, they're actually very pretty so i'm the, the sherman one i don't want to damage so i've got a i've left the panther one here that i can damage to hell and back and we'll see just how good self-healing actually is not sure i needed that space taken up though but anyway uh, actually it does beg the question just how big are these squares? See, a lot of them will come with angles and whatever. I don't see any angles on this. Oh, centimeters, okay. Oh, and here are inches. So we have centimeters and inches, don't have anything for angles, but in fairness, if you're gonna be cutting angles and you're that worried about it, you're probably gonna have a protractor anyway, so it's not the end of the world. And I get to stab panthers. Up to uh, damaging the knife. So, thank you very much, Brad. Uh, let's see, where have I... I put the bow machine gun. I've done the driver's... So, uh, I have not done the... I'm not even sure what the hell they are. Deflectors? Protectors? Bravo 2.3 and Bravo 2.2. Two. They appear to be protectors for the uh, exhaust system. And I suspect that if this was a modern kit, these exhausts would be, uh, let's check the camera. These exhausts would actually be a photo etch that you'd bend around the outside instead of this molded mesh. But anyway, let's go on. So on the right hand side is two, three, which is this one here. By the way, speaking of t-shirts, since I am wearing, by sheer coincidence, uh, my significant emotional event t-shirt that I completely and utterly forgot I had. Uh, folks that are wondering about the extra large sizes, so like 3XL, one chap was looking for a 5XL. Um, according to Everpress, at this time, the only larger size t-shirts that they have are the white ones and black ones. So if you're looking for a green or tan, uh, that is going to be a no-go. But uh, if you're looking for this one or the Drive Me Closer, which is black, and I can't remember if the Tank on Fire is black or green. I need to check. Um, and for some reason, a drop-down doesn't show it. Go ahead and drop them in an email, and they ought to be able to help you out. The time period for this, by the way, is closing. So they're going to close orders because people have been paying money for it. They want their product. Um, closes in a week or so, I think it is. I think it's on Sunday. By the way, I'm, I'm recording this in Memorial Day. So by the time it gets out, it'll be less than a week. Oh, this is ridiculous. The size of the hole in the upper hole here compared to the actual locator tab is insane.
still it does seem to cover it all and in fairness I probably want to do this I'm going to be going I'm looking I'm looking at a gap here I can see right right through and there was also that gap in the lower front hull I'm going to be going through with a filler or at least white glue or something to fill up the gap so, I, so when you spray you can't see right through the vehicle I mean in fairness I would rather have gaps than mismatched moldings that don't fit and you're spending forever filing and filling in gaps instead of just filling in gaps witness some of those trumpeter kits that I have downstairs on the shelf I can't wait to get back to doing modern kits that actually fit well. Uh, and Bravo 27 is an engine hatch. I mean, I don't know why they bother putting these things separately, realistically. I mean, what's the point? If you're sure, if you're if you wanted a super detailed the, what, the transmission at the back, or it's actually not even the transmission, is it? It's the uh, what will go there. I'll be accessing some of the cooling system. But I'm not about to turn this into a super detailed kit. I mean, of all the things that you're going to, oh, I, I'm going to decide I want to open up the uh, the cooling system hatch and in scratch build the cooling system inside. Why? Speaking of, I also have to do the opening handles on the front. More cutting and filing to do here. So, if you recall, I did the model challenge, a model workshop challenge. Uh, I tagged three people uh, Steve Zaluga, uh, Adam Savage, and Clifton Smith. Who was it Clifton James? Clifton. Car manufacturer and Steve did actually do a very short but it's a start uh, video and he has been putting out a couple of short videos what, what he does basically is uh, one thing I'd say about Steve is uh, I thought I make obscure kits I mean I used to be in my uh, modeling club that you know if there was a kit that was placed on the table and it was modern and it was obscure and nobody knew what it was the chances are it would be one of mine. Steve goes for obscure, but there's no kit of it. He goes and he scratch builds or he kit bashes or he does whatever it is to come up with. Oh, I once saw a photograph of a Jeep with a mounted six pounder or 57 millimeter M1. I'll build that or, or whatever. Uh, so uh, I uh, expect to see some interesting little uh, little models show up from time to time, and he usually puts you know a brief little moment uh, commentary about what the hell the original prototype was that he's just made a model of. Uh, so I need to do the front end, Bravo One Five. Ah, interesting. So the headlight on this is hollow. A terrible flash I'm trying to figure out where I need to put the snip however it is hollow and that implies that I can do a pretty reasonable glass once I have it all sprayed then put the um, oh where's this camera uh, so I can I spray the whole vehicle 
then you can detail paint silver here and then fill it up with crystal clear uh, which will give it the impression of glass and it'll even uh, end with a bit of a convex surface so it'll look uh, it'll actually probably look most like real thing on this whole model And of course the locator is, oh no, there is actually a base on this one. So I can't go down too far. Hallelujah. Of course, there's absolutely no indicator telling me how far, uh, how far down the stem I have to stop. Cut it. Oh, down you go, in you go. Really, you little buggy, you don't fit? For Christ's sake, okay. I may have to do this to, oh, no, wait, I had movement. I had movement, I lost it. Damn it. I don't need to lose it, I was putting it in backwards anyway. Where again you look at the front of the vehicle you try to figure out just <laughs> it looks absolutely nothing like so on the uh, on the box there are little bolts and hinges here holding the the light in place and the actual piece itself is just a just a simple stem that looks absolutely nothing like it so I'm not going to worry too much. Uh, Bravo 26, a couple of handles. And they're going to be lost in no short order, I'll tell you that. Hope you're enjoying the series of Swedish vehicles. I've got a couple more to go. And then I come to a screeching halt because I haven't gone anywhere in months. In all the time that I've known my wife, this is absolutely the longest I've ever stayed at home. Even the army has been working remotely. We were supposed to shoot a pistol qualification a while ago, never did. Of course, uh, the whole thing shut down at the wrong time. If you've never shot the US Army pistol qualification, I don't know how it's possible to fail it. I swear you can pull the, the bullets out of the magazine and fling them at the target and you will still pass. Yet some people manage to fail it, don't know how. These handles are huge. Oh, good Lord. Oh, the holes are huge. It's one of those times where you, you almost have to get some of the adhesive on the end of this, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of masking tape maybe on the outside. I don't think we're quite there yet. Ah. And the carpet monster has claimed its first victim. And there is no way in hell I'm going to see that down here. Yes, I am familiar with the various techniques of like laying down uh, plastic tarp sheeting or something like that. So when it goes flying, it doesn't go flying too much. 
Okay, I need to have a chew on how to fix that one. Um, there is a spare, a couple of spare pieces. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'll, since these are the handles on the front deck, I will use one of the real handles for that. And I may, with a piece of rod or something, do the last one. I mean, no, that's how these things show up by the time you're done. Of course, what's most annoying is when they show up after you've made the replacement part. I have in the past gone as far as casting spare parts of resins from one kit to another kit. My blue and gold S tank, for example, was uh, the kit was a uh, an STR V one hundred three B, but the actual um, the actual prototype was a C. And one of the big changes is there's a shroud or a housing. I'm going to lose another one. Uh, a shroud or a housing around where the gun tube enters. the hall. All right, so thus ends, oh, hang on, Bravo 6, what's Bravo 6? I have no idea what Bravo 6 is, but there is a Bravo 6. Appear to be some sort of reinforcing component for the front towing mount. More to the point, from the picture in the front, it seems to be part of as opposed to uh, an additional. So it looks like that has to, uh, in theory, be seamless. It won't be. Depending on how I fill it in. Really, I put it in that crooked. Oh, I'm a freaking genius. Okay. Mm. It'll fit. More for me to fill. I have around the right hand side now. Bever 19, 24, and 21. That's inside, so I don't care. Let's see how this one's keyed. It is keyed. It seems to be key. Whoops. Nice try. Quick test fit. Well, I call it a test fit. All, all, it, all it tells me is that it's not the wrong way around, but it doesn't tell me that it fits, unfortunately. Because it looks like it doesn't. Well, as I say, good enough for government work. Which, in fairness, back in World War II was a compliment. If it was good enough that the government accepted all the 
quality control tests, you had made a good product. And again, it was uh, you go to the archives, there are boxes, for example, they would take, uh, just for QA, they would take a random tank off, let's say, Fisher's production line. And instead of shipping it to the battlefield, they'd ship it to Aberdeen. And the, you'd see the test report, in the, it's in the archives, it's like, test report of Fisher tank number 12415, whatever. And they run it through the full battery of tests just to make sure that it actually is still meeting quality control standards. That, you know, after the initial ones that were tested and accepted, that uh, standards haven't gone down as I refill my alcoholic beverage of choice. You see, this is one thing to, to help you with the relaxation of making models is get yourself alcoholed up and that way if you lose a part, sod it. All right, so this one goes on the right hand side, goes in here, uh -huh, into here. It disappears into the upper hull superstructure. Again, with a massive gap. Which, in fairness, this one probably can get away with being realistic if it's not filled in. Oh. That actually fits well. Two pieces that actually fit well. The, uh, the uh, muzzle cover. Muzzle? Um, muffler. Muffler would have two functions in World War II. Well, probably in any war, actually. It doesn't just muffle the noise. It also muffles the flash. So from uh, backfires or whatever the opposite of a backfire. I'll call it a front fire. A lot of what we call a backfires are actually something else, a pre-detonation or something. Uh, they shoot out flames and the mufflers are there to reduce the flame signature as well as the audio signature. So let's do the other one now. Ah, interesting, this one says do not apply cement. So the, uh, the radiator here that I had suggested I shouldn't glue into place before I spray it and then I remove it out and, and paint the radiator grill. Uh, it would appear that the instructions agree with me. Serves me right for not paying sufficient attention to the instructions. Every now and then, speaking of uh, missing, missing pieces, every now and then you find that a kit manufacturer is nice enough to provide you with a couple of spares for those little annoying pieces that you, that the manufacturer knows you're going to lose one or two. Gun tubes, of course, are going to be horrible for this. As you can imagine, the kid is napping. It's my opportunity when for once I'm not playing World of Tanks, Steel Beast, or I've gotten myself heavily into DCS actually recently. Been playing the uh, playing the UH-1, a surprisingly difficult aircraft to get the knack of. Vortex ring states are a bastard. I figured it out now. My my remaining problem is that the uh, I'm working through the Greek campaign and it's buggy. In fact, it's buggy to the point if I come to a screeching halt, I'm going to move to the F5. It's amazing how simple fighter jets are to land. Just put the uh, the path indicator. Um, the flight path indicator on the end of the runway and, and, and you're good to go. Even the flaps are automatic. Compared to my 172 when I'm checking, you know, everything. Of course, some naval aviator is gonna chime in and say, oh yeah, we'll try a carrier, okay, granted. And also in fairness, 
they will land aircraft in crappy weather that I will not fly <laughs> at 172. Uh, so it's uh, more of a good-natured ribbing than anything else. Oh, my headlight fell off. <laughs> Let's try this again. Maybe I have it a little bit too deep. Because there was nothing on there indicating. Well, there was a tiniest little bit of a uh, of a ridge. So I may have not just not cut this deep enough down. So as I say, I've moved on to the F5 now and a pleasant little aircraft to fly in DCS. Kind of wondering if I want to get a VR headset. They look cool. They're also kind of pricey for what they are. Don't worry, I'm not going to stop doing Steel Beasts and Tank Sims. And indeed, when I run out of vehicles, there's another three, I think, Swedish videos coming out before I run out of so, uh, I run out of subject material. So I'm going to have no choice but to come up with Switchology videos and the like. Uh, there will be a Soviet tank doctrine video coming out in uh, in about a month. I need to start writing that. All right, that's them. Uh, another of the big questions uh, for stowage is, do you place stowage before or after you do all the other spray painting? I personally lean towards uh, mounting the stowage first and then being trying to be careful with the paintbrush afterwards. There will probably be parts where you just can't get the paintbrush, or if you do, you got to touch up the main body work again afterwards. But I would rather do that than run the risk of having glue mar the paint finish. So let's put on the jack. I think I'm going to have to give up shortly and let the wife cut my hair. I've been trying to avoid it and hope that I can actually get to a barber. And yeah, the barbers are open, but... I'm in two minds about actually going to one. On the one hand, they probably need the money. On the other, what's the point of a quarantine if you break it to get your hair cut? This is, of course, one of the longest I've gone without cutting my hair. Oh, for a modern mold, that doesn't have seam marks. Good Lord. I have to attack this with a, uh, with filler, actually. It's a little bit concave. This is just completely, oh, good Lord. What is the bottom? Hopefully nobody's looking. I suppose we're doing a talk, uh, presenting at a panel in uh, the World War II Museum in New Orleans. That event got canceled or postponed for a full year. And unfortunately, like a number of museums, uh, they're feeling the financial crunch. They it's the downside of a museum like theirs, which is very professional, very, um, what would be the right word? Revenue oriented, perhaps. Uh, they, have a f they have the happy ability of being able to hire a full-time staff to do a lot of the work. And that usually means that you can afford quality staff who are well vested. On the other hand, the museums that primarily work off of volunteers, although yes, they are hurting for revenue as well, 
the volunteers don't cost much more. And in fairness to a lot of volunteers, they often are pretty good. Uh, when, when Littlefield was uh, alive and he was restoring his vehicles, uh, one of the questions came up, you know, why don't you accept volunteers? He, he, would, he wouldn't, he would only accept paid mechanics. And, uh, well, he could afford it, to be blunt. And the reasoning was that paid mechanics, you, they were reliable. They, he wasn't worried so much that the quality of work would suffer with a volunteer, as much as the fact that you could plan when you had full-time staff, full-time paid staff. You never knew quite what was going to happen next with a volunteer staff. They could just turn around one day and decide, oh, I can't make it this week, or I can't make it for a month and a half, or whatever. Oh, we have a Charlie one, Charlie 10. It's the tanker bar. Kind of curious how this self-healing business works. Well, it does seem to have actually self-healed. Well, in fairness, the mold seam line on this one isn't quite as bad. Definitely still there though. Almost went for the beer. Been watching a movie, uh, a good Memorial Day movie. If you haven't seen it, never really got very much publicity at the time, uh, and it is a relatively low budget. One is Taking Chance. It's worth a gander. And um, there is a YouTube video that just went up uh, by PBS up in uh, Wyoming, where Dan, uh, Dan Starks is putting the finishing touches to phase one of his National Museum of Military Vehicles, I believe it is. And Chance was apparently a a uh, hometown fighter from Du Bois, Du Bois, Du Bois. You have a French name, why don't you just pronounce it in a French way? So he's uh, got a little section of the museum there. Anyway, it's about a half hour, it's about a half hour video by uh, Wyoming PBS, just came out maybe a couple of days ago. And uh, gives you an idea as to what to expect. As I say, it's just phase one, so they haven't gotten to Vietnam or the Cold War or um, uh, the War on Terror. So that comes to an end of the hull. And they do have some interesting vehicles for later on. So, for example, I'm fairly sure I saw the old Littlefield CCVL in their collection. And the CCVL is sort of a predecessor to the M8, which we all know is a Buford. Apparently, it never really got uh, was officially turned to Buford, but we all, we all know it as Buford for some reason. Um, for all I know, it's a bit like uh, Buick calling the M18 Hellcat, which did officially get authorized, or not authorized, but accepted by ordinance. Uh, I should say that. Uh, accepted by ordinance and being the official name of the vehicle are two different things. So ordinance said this vehicle is going to be known as the Hellcat or this vehicle is going to be known as General Jackson. And so it was within ordinance, but you wouldn't find it in the manual. There was never an approved name by the people by the army as a whole. So yes, the name is associated. No, it wasn't the official sanctioned name of the vehicle per the 
uh, standard supply. Uh, what on earth is that for? Charlie 20, I'm sure it's got a reason. Oh, this probably holds the, uh, the rear machine gun in place. Uh, so anyway, they have the CCVL. And it's a uh, it's an interesting design. And I'm led to understand, never having looked into an M8 myself, which begs a question. I wonder if the lads at BA. I know somebody might be able to let me do that vehicle. Um, the M8, uh, I believe, has a similar configuration as the CCVL. Basically, turned into a predecessor of the M8, and it is an autoloader vehicle with the two, but it's a bit unusual, is that the ammunition is on the left-hand side and the two crewmen are on the right. And I'm not sure quite how that affects the balance, depending on how much ammunition you fired off. As I recall, they used a Bradley transmission, a Hammett engine, uh, all sorts of things to try to keep the uh, keep the logistics and supply and costs down. And the other item I believe they have is the losing prototype, uh, the GD prototype for the XM1, which last I saw was a complete wreck. All the torsion bars had snapped. Um, I don't think they'll ever do a, a full up restoration, but they may at least be able to, if they can somehow figure out the torsion bars, um, or else just put the thing up on jacks and hope for the best, uh, a cosmetic restoration of the thing, which would be nice to see. Anyway, so they were supposed to be open in, actually today, they were supposed to be opening today. Uh, I was planning on being in Wyoming for that. Uh, of course, coronavirus, can't do it. Uh, so they are going to reschedule for some indeterminate date in the future. I'll keep an eye out for that and hopefully I'll be able to, to wander up to Wyoming and figure it out. Okay, so this goes here. Oh, okay, that's simple enough. Oh, that's ugly. So where do I want to have the mismatch? At the front or at the back? <laughs> yeah, it's not flash either. I better cut out the back plate. Oh, I missed uh, Charlie 5. Okay, I'll come back to him. Cover the back, and that will cover the front. Somebody's definitely insistent on reaching me. former squadron commander. This group, uh, Memorial Day greetings to the best group of soldiers, Americans, men, I have had the privilege of working with. Thanks for all you've done. And of course, everybody is replying back. We didn't lose anybody in the Iraq run. We lost one he wasn't technically even ours, he was attached to us, uh, and his working dog were killed in a uh, roadside bomb in Afghanistan. E4 by the name of uh, Steffi, and his dog was Macy, if I recall. The dog actually outranked the handler. Uh, for whatever reason, the dog was given the rank of E5. Not quite sure how that worked in practice. Uh, 
there were a couple of uh, a couple of very nasty injuries that were that were suffered. I remember, I remember one we had, we got intel of a uh, of a bomb that was set up in the line of uh, in the route along which one of our convoys was going. Uh, they're out of FM radio range, so we send them a signal in the Blue Force tracker. But you know, you got to actually look at the damn thing every now and then to see the message pop up. And we're watching on the drone video as the as the convoy is driving, 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 and then blam! Uh, one of the chaps lost his leg in that one. And when you say it couldn't happen to a nicer guy, I mean literally, he was a wonderful guy. Uh, still around, still kicking in Georgia, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. I got a message from him in uh, a Facebook message from about two weeks ago, actually. Okay, so the gun comes in next. Where's the gun? That should be Bravo. Bravo 3 3. Here it is. There is another movie from Memorial Day actually called Memorial Day, and the I don't know if it's actually all that great a movie, realistically, uh, but an interesting. I mean, I've watched it. It's, it's okay. It's it is a tearjerker, uh, especially towards the end. Uh, but the interesting thing about it is that the actors that they got. So it's, it's sort of a series of flashbacks. Uh, the World War II vet as he is today and flashbacks to the World War II vet as he was in World War II. And they used the actors, our father and son. So when you look at the guy in World War II, he looks like the guy in, you know, in, in the present day, which was, uh, which was a neat touch. I'm sure that award-winning modelers will place this in a vise and use a pin drill and drill the way into this uh, into this machine gun. I am not an award-winning modeler, and I don't care. <laughs> At least not award-winning beyond my local club, which isn't really saying much. I was. I remember one uh, one article in Model Railroad magazine. Um, oh, that reminds me. Where did I put those things? Somebody wanted to know what sort of uh, what sort of railroad Model Railroad things I did. Oh, maybe the next video I'll show you. Um, the, the, to win the uh, to win the modeling contest, the trick was to. Uh, look at look at the table. You see which categories have no entries at all, and you just go grab whatever and you put it there. So if you're you know if you go to one to th one to three fifty skill uh, one to thirty five skill armor, then you know that there's a hell of a lot of competition. But if you're doing something obscure like I don't know, in America flats, for whatever reason flats are not a thing here, and I don't know why. It used to be very big in Ireland, so in the society a modeling club that I was in in Ireland, there was always a, a good flats con uh, section. Uh, but you talk about flats in, in the US and it's not like nobody has a clue what you're on about. Well, now that fits well. I'm not going to complain about that. doesn't fit that well but as long as the top does I'll be happy enough of course this little machine gun projector projection is getting away in hindsight you may be better off not bothering with the friction the friction yoki 
friction plate, I guess you call it, and just gluing the machine gun in place. There were some complaints about the last video. It's kind of boring, and well, yeah, I get that. It's a maker scale model. It's not exactly a spectator sport. I used to shoot rifle competitively, Olympic air rifle. Even technically, once represented Ireland. That also was not a spectator sport. There was one exception where everything was down to the wire and we were watching closely each individual target as it was brought back. Hello, wife. Goodbye, wife. She waved. One day she might actually show up in the camera, but we'll see. She probably wanted something. <laughs> That's the first time I've had to make a model in, in weeks. You don't exactly say happy Memorial Day to people, do you? All right, Charlie 16, 14, 18. And 17. Oh, 17 is the camera. If there's any place that they seem to have gotten the mold seems more or less right, that seems to be it. It's a little flash. Not enough to notice. This goes here, this goes here. The, um, it looks like the mount that could in real life be one of those horizontally swiveling ones, similar to the, uh, the lighter Japanese tanks. It may not be, I, I really would need to look it up. Of course, the only reason you'd want one of those is if your traverse system is not, isn't really good enough to do uh, good aiming on its own. So this is uh, a common, uh, but it shouldn't be necessary. Feature of vehicles, of course, it just weakens the trunnion. You got four trunnions really instead of two. Or one instead of two, depending how you count the trunnion. Four mounts. I'll have to come back to that in a moment. Let's put the end cap on, or the muzzle, Charlie 22, which has its own amount of flash on it. On the plus side, we're starting to get close to the end. Make 
to the irony of not having any of the casualties in Iraq was, was it Iraq? It was Iraq or Afghanistan. I lost somebody in a motorcycle accident shortly after we came back. Uh, one guy, a sheriff's deputy, was killed his first day back on the job. So he's away from, he's, so basically he's away from you know, being a cop for however many months it was, a year basically, then takes a couple of months to leave. Goes back to work early, yeah, earlier than he had to. He responds to a guy with a rifle in Walmart and gets killed. My supply sergeant was also killed after our return. He was having breakfast at IHOP. Guy came in, started shooting randomly. Nobody knows why. So he and two others were killed having breakfast at IHOP. People wonder why I bring a sidearm everywhere I can. He's one of those guys that uh, everybody um, looks up to, shall we say. He used to be an infantryman, actually, before he went into supply. And on the in the toilets, in the latrines in Afghanistan, you know, there'd be uh, SFC blank jokes, uh, beats Chuck Norris. So sort of Chuck Norris jokes, but using the sergeant. Come on, you little oh, this thing is not going straight. Really? The cannon won't mount straight. Bombs to that. What sort of cannon won't mount straight? No, it very definitely, it very definitely is off kilter. Oh, bollocks. He was a pretty damn good chess player as well. So our XO had set up a chess board. He bought one locally in Afghanistan. He set up a chess board you know, in his office. And we started, I'm not gonna say play by email sort of thing, but uh, if I had a bit of time, I'd, I'd leave my office in the three shop and I'd walk into the next building. I'd go to the XO's office, look at the board, make a move, and then I'd leave. And then while I was gone, the XO would make his move until I came back and we had another game. Well, after a couple of uh, after a couple of rounds, unbeknownst to me, uh, because I was I was beating the XO fairly soundly, uh, unbeknownst to me, he brought in a ringer. My supply sergeant, who also is damn good at chess. And I, I mean, oh, bollocks! All I noticed was a very sudden increase in skill of the XO, who was suddenly providing me with quite a challenge. So that may or may not have been healthy, but it was better to, to lick it off than let it dig into the into the plastic of the of the turret front. I'll wash it before before painting. Well, 
if you don't attack it with a uh, with a square angle, <laughs> it's not it's not so easy to notice it's off kilter. Last page. See how his hatch. Well, that's interesting. I feel like I miss I missed a step or two somewhere. Aha, uh -huh, I did. Ah, oh, that's nice of them. They did provide an extra piece. Good for them. All right, Bravo 26. Actually prefer backgammon to chess. But it's hard to find somebody who really knows how to play backgammon. Even harder to find somebody who knows what a doubling cube is like if you want to play for points. All about probabilities. Probabilities and odds. I guess since I mentioned the name of uh, the chap who lost in Afghanistan, uh, my sergeant was Sergeant First Class Chris Enrighi. The chap who was shot as a cop, Sergeant Deutsch. In fairness, I can't recall if it was an E6 or an E7 at the time. battalion commander when we went to Iraq whose name for the life of me I cannot recall off the top of my head um, he didn't last more than I think two years after we got back home he uh, ended up with colon cancer colon in his stomach one or the other it's one of the other side effects of getting old is uh, people you know start dying I guess I should qualify that they start dying at a greater rate than than they used to. I've actually been very lucky. Very few people I know, including relatives, have died. Awfully morbid thing to be talking about, but it is Memorial Day. Remember, a good funeral is a celebration of a life well lived. We're all going to snuff it anyway, so there's no point in getting too morose about it. I should add, I'm being fairly quiet up here because, well, A, the kid is sleeping, and B, I, I don't know, I'm just not inclined to project my voice up here for whatever reason as I'm doing this. So do not mistake my lower than normal volume for being ex exhausted. Or, okay, I am tired, but uh, it, it's just I have no particular desire to be particularly loud right now.
I think I won't put down the, there will be a gradual improvement in my working conditions as we go on. I think I, I will bring down the spotlight for the next one. So they put two grab handles here and I'm not entirely sure I understand the function of them. I mean, these ones you can understand because you can see hinges, but there's no hinges here. One of those great mysteries probably to be solved by actually looking at a real vehicle. Actually, now I'm looking at it, they've, uh, the periscope has vanished off of that Sherman for some reason. So back where we were. The hatch. Charlie 6 and 7. It gives me the option, should I wish, to model it in the open position. Well, I, since there is no interior detail, I do not so wish. Then again, these things are so small that if you stick a figure into them, you probably wouldn't notice that there's nothing inside. Okay, so again, I've got a, I have a mold seam line that goes all the way around. Oh crap, that's supposed to be there. Shoot. Not the seam line, just a couple of bumps here that are just by sheer coincidence happen to be on the damn seam line. Another mold seam line goes all the way around. Annoying as all hell. At least it's a seam line and not an offset line. Seam lines are a lot easier to get rid of. Part of a cupola that took way too long. Alright, so that goes there. So down, so this goes on top. Interesting loader's hatch, loader slash gunner. So if I do wish to open up the hatch, they have it pre-scored. So what I have to do is just cut in the middle. Obviously, I do not. I 
small little hatch in the uh, in the rear upper hatch for what I must presume to be signal flags. The holes in this hatch are absolutely ginormous. I'm trying to see if you can see how big where the handle is. It occurs to me I'm doing a lot of the stuff outside of line of sight. Hmm, I must fix, it, fix this for next time. It's, yeah, I don't, I don't do anything down here. It's completely wasted, uh, wasted vision. We'll figure it out by the end. Uh, let's see, Charlie 19. See, unlike my regular videos, this doesn't exactly allow me to do reshoots. So just a machine gun mount and a couple of tools. And a couple of spare pieces that I'm not quite sure what they're for. Oh, okay. Really? That's a side for the machine gun? Here you can't see much. All right. So this will be a form of constant improvement as I keep going. We really don't expect many people to actually watch these things. I say this is hardly a spectator sport. But it doesn't cost me anything much to make, so what the hell? And this pintle comes to the rear, so let's put this in here and that is a turret. I hope it's got enough clearance. It looks like the uh, the hatches may barely clear. All right, so some stowage, Charlie 13 and 24. Oh, there's 13, a shovel. And a pick. The shovel we always found plenty of use for. The pick, I don't remember ever using. So again, you look at these mounting points, so this is evidently some sort of a strap or mounting point that you would think there would be something that holds it around the pick to hold it in place. Because right now this this uh, spade is just 
levitating itself into position where it's magnetically attached or something. There's the boxes. Not very specific. There's a, uh, looks like it could be straps there. Charlie Eleven, there's one more, one more hook handle. So you get to the point of looking around to see where, where there apparently are holes. So apparently I managed to twist this handle here. It doesn't matter because these things, when you close them, they aren't necessarily going to close straight regardless. So of all the misalignments, the handles are one you can live with. Locking handles, of course, not, not grab handles. So I'll just put the whole damn lot together. figure out exactly where the seams are so I know where to put the glue and the handle fell off Reassuring. So it looks like this goes on top. Jesus Christ. Do this in two stages because the front of the vehicle does not seem to wish to work with the back of the vehicle. Ridiculous gap here. Oh, good God. I don't even know where to start.
only for now, but hold this in place for a minute or two while I wait for everything to dry. And that's just the front half. Definitely need to move the camera. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I guess part three, uh, I'm going. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to film filming filling in uh, the various gaps. I'm just going to uh, do that off camera and then go into the painting. Probably in another few weeks. Again, just the way that my schedule's going. So at the front in place, you look at there's a you can see this gap coming here, which is going to be amusing. I mean, look at these gaps underneath and the side. So my other camera died and I, it's kind of hard for me to get it. So we're just gonna close up here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is try to fill in some of these gaps. I'm not gonna get all of them, what the hell. And I will be back to you in a month or two for painting. Right, well, uh, in the meantime, back to the Swedish stuff. So, see you Saturday.